Hey, Jim Hoffman here from Turbinetic again. I want to round out this quick three video series about bleeding and hemorrhaging and focus today on how to manage that uncontrolled bleeding. Reason why we get called to a lot of the scenes. And the first way to manage it, of course, is that direct pressure and bandaging, raising the extremity above the level of the heart. And this is our first line of action when we're talking about controlling bleeding for, for patients. The second thing that you're going to consider, and depends, of course, upon your protocols and what you have available to you, is application of a tourniquet. This is used for extremity bleeding when direct pressure, I just mentioned, is not sufficient enough to stop the bleeding. And this should be placed two to three inches above the bleeding site, and it should be tightened until the bleeding stops and there's no distal pulse. Now, of course, that can become a little difficult if the patient is bleeding from the abdomen or the head. You can't really use the tourniquet in those situations. But this is when we're going to talk about things like hemostatic agents. That's becoming much more popular in EMS. And again, this is when tourniquets are really impractical, with, like that abdominal bleeding. These types of agents really promote clotting when the body's mechanisms fail. Again, we talked earlier in the last video about arterial bleeding very hard for that type of bleeding to clot. So maybe a tourniquet or a hemostatic agent would come into, into play there. Some special considerations, we talk about managing bleeding, is those things like impaled objects. You don't want to remove an impaled object unless it's obstructing the airway. Otherwise, leave it as it is, stabilize that impaled object in place, and apply direct pressure. Another thing that we see a lot in EMS, and it's not really trauma-related, it is more medical related is the epistaxis or the nosebleed. A lot of times patients have high blood pressure, can't control it, and the, the nosebleed is sort of the body's way to relieve that pressure of the hypertension. So what you want to do with these patients is have the patient lean forward and apply direct pressure to the nostrils for about 10 to 15 minutes and have them avoid tilting the head back. Guys, this is something you're going to see a lot if you haven't seen it already. And many patients have this tendency to try to lean their head back or keep taking their fingers off of their nose and see, checking to see if it's still bleeding, seeing if it's clotting. Encourage your patients to not do that. It's going to just prolong the, them stopping that bleeding or at least managing it to get to the hospital where they can actually pack the nose, which a lot of times what they have to do to stop that type of bleeding. Just to conclude, guys, on this, effective bleeding is a critical skill when it comes to management and managing bleeding for EMTs and an EMS. When you understand the different types of bleeding, how the body responds, and the appropriate interventions that you can do, it's essential for when it comes to trying to save someone's life and to stop that bleeding in those emergency, emergency situations. Now, again, maybe a capillary bleed isn't really that much of an emergency. But for the other ones, quick and appropriate action can make a significant difference in patient outcomes, okay? So yeah, the capillary bleed, not that big of an emergency, usually a small bandage, we'll go ahead and take care of that, no big deal. But the other ones, you need to know what to do and to recognize it as being a more emergent issue. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Of course, if you want more free study resources, go check out Terramedic Insider, 100% free, it's waiting for you. It's lots of easy tips and resources that are going to help you really pass your exams and succeed in EMS and build your knowledge base as an EMS professional. You can grab it all. It's over at myturbomedic.com. Of course, I put a link below for you in the notes so you can get to it very easily. All right, again, I'll wrap it up. Jim Hoffman from Turbomedic. Stay safe.